Hey there, fellow Sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. Well, it's June, the month where every corporate knee bows down and every American institution confesses that the rainbow flag is overlord of all. Wear the patch, watch the parade, celebrate, or else. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be your abstainer today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> So you may have noticed over the years that as the alphabet gang has expanded its letters and added stripes on its increasingly hideous flag, its mission has also crept. Calls for tolerance morphed into acceptance, acceptance demanded celebration, and celebration now even demands participation. See, it's not enough that every major city in America has a pride parade, or that virtually every single corporation vomits a Skittles bag onto their logo every June. There can be no spaces in public or private life to escape from Pride Month. It's a clockwork rainbow for our civilization and like this poor kid along the parade route, we will be forced to watch. Happy Pride! Tonight, bandanas and lube and... Happy Pride! Watch! You must watch a drag queen on an eggplant emoji. Don't you dare turn away from half-naked men whipping people in dog masks. Every decent human should accept that lifestyle and applaud it. If you don't, well, that's news. Recently, five Tampa Bay Rays players abstained from wearing rainbow-colored logos and caps on the team's Pride Night, and that was such a countercultural moment that it drew the attention of CNN, Yahoo, Huffington Post, ABC, NBC News, NPR, Washington Examiner, Washington Times, The Blaze, Daily Mail, basically everywhere. The attempted assassination of a sitting Supreme Court justice got less attention than five dudes refusing to be a walking billboard for a lifestyle that is utterly contrary to the religion. Jason Adam, a pitcher and apparently the spokesperson for the abstainers, explained their decision this way. So it's a hard decision because ultimately we all said what we want is them to know that all are welcome and loved here. But when we put it on our bodies, I think a lot of guys decided that it's just a lifestyle that maybe, not that they look down on anybody or think differently, it's just that maybe we don't want to encourage it if we believe in Jesus, who's encouraged us to live a lifestyle that would abstain from that behavior. It's not judgmental, it's not looking down, it's just what we believe the lifestyle he's encouraged us to live, for our good, not to withhold. But again, we love these men and women, we care about them, and we want them to feel safe and welcome here. That's about as mealy mouth a response as I've ever heard. We're not judging, we're not looking down. We love these men and women, they are welcome. We just don't feel comfortable being an advertisement for a lifestyle that technically we disagree with. But as nicely and as warmly as they could put it, that still wasn't good enough. Tyler Kepner of the New York Times chastised the race and the players, writing, all this can be exhausting for the fans who would rather take their sports without politics, yet an event like Pride Night should stand apart. It is meant to be a collective show of unity without judgment, yet some players were allowed to send a different message. By allowing the players to opt out of the promotion and to use the platform to endorse an opposite viewpoint, the Rays undercut the message of inclusion they were trying to send. Tolerance isn't good enough, you can't opt out, you must participate. It's not enough that we have a month dedicated to you or that you have your own special baseball night, and it's not enough that the overwhelming majority of players wore rainbow logos. If there is any resistance, if anyone, anywhere, refuses to bend the knee to the pride flag, I won't feel included. We demand 100% participation. Is that how this works? I don't care if it violates your religion, I don't care if you're Muslim or Jewish or atheist, it's Easter, put the Jesus is risen bumper sticker on your car, you bigot. You must wear the rainbow logo on your body, you must affirm the rainbow lifestyle, even if it violates your conscience or religion. In fact, you shouldn't say lifestyle or behavior. Quote, words like lifestyle and behavior are widely known tropes often interpreted as a polite cover for condemning gay culture. Why would anyone have any issue with gay culture?
No decent, reasonable person could possibly object to what happens under the rainbow banner. And religion is certainly no excuse, continuing with the New York Times. When people use their interpretation of religion to justify discrimination against people for the way they were born, it's really an indictment of them and their faith. Sports author Andrew Moranis wrote, Moranis added that acknowledging that people are people and all fans are welcome is not something you should be able to opt out of. ESPN commentator Sarah Spain put it even more bluntly. Pride is about inclusion, so you don't love them and you don't welcome them if you're not willing to wear the patch. And calling it a lifestyle reveals to me that you've done not even a modicum of research or understanding on this topic. It's what tends to happen when a privileged class isn't affected by things. This is not just about baseball. That religious exemption BS, which is used in sport and otherwise, also allows for people to be denied health care, jobs, apartments, children, prescriptions, all sorts of rights. And so we have to stop tiptoeing around it because we're trying to protect people who are trying to be bigoted from asking for them to be exempt from it when the very people that they are bigoted against are suffering the consequences. You must abandon your conscience. You must forego your religion. Tolerance is not good enough. You must participate or you're a hateful bigot. We read the statement from the players and we saw her statement. If you're an honest broker and you look at the two statements, which one is hate filled? The only one who is seething in hatred here is Sarah Spain. She hates these players, she hates Orthodox Christianity, she hates you, she hates me, and you should just get out because this is a place of inclusion and welcoming. So says Sarah Michael Scott. And Sarah Michael Scott also objects to the word lifestyle. And calling it a lifestyle reveals to me that you've done not even a modicum of research or understanding on this topic. Now, presumably, though it's challenging to sift through the inanity, she sees lifestyle as a term that undermines biological predispositions. They didn't choose the thug life, the thug life chose them, basically. And this is a common refrain that people without even a modicum of understanding of Christianity make. When it comes to heterosexuality, we see distinction between one's biological disposition and one's sexual behavior or lifestyle. We do that all the time. We condemn cads and fornicators and adulterers. You may have an orientation and base instinct, base desires and base appetites, but that doesn't give you license to act out on it as a heterosexual. So why should it give license to homosexuals? We make clear and obvious moral distinctions between sexual orientation and sexual behavior when it comes to heterosexuals, but it's bigoted if we do the same for homosexuals? Why are they special? They, they think it's something of a gotcha to Christianity if they say they're born this way. Um, it's not a gotcha. That's kind of a basic tenet of Christianity. Why is it, do you suppose, that Christians constantly talk about being born again? I'll give you multiple choice. Is it because A, we're born perfect and wonderful and beautiful and totally fine the way we are, or B, we're born with a disposition to sin and we are by nature objects of wrath? You got a 50-50 shot. Which one do you think fits with the concept of being born again? Sarah got it wrong and continues to get things wrong when she says, that religious exemption BS, which is used in sports and otherwise, also allows for people to be denied health care, jobs, apartments, children, prescriptions, all sorts of rights. So none of the things you mentioned are rights, either human rights or rights enumerated by the Constitution. And the BS here is that homosexuals can't get jobs or apartments or prescriptions or health care? Really? Gays don't have jobs or housing? Seems unlikely. In fact, there are federal and state laws against discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Religion too, by the way. But Sarah Spain wasn't the only one to think it was religious BS to abstain. Here's another sports writer who tweeted, Will someone please show me the Bible passage that says, Thou shalt not wear a rainbow on thou's clothing. Sure, it's Leviticus 19.19. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor shall you wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. I'm kidding. You're not going to find condemnation of wearing rainbow clothing in the Bible, particularly because the rainbow wasn't co-opted as a pride symbol until the 1970s. The Bible was written and compiled quite a bit earlier than that. But if you're curious, and you're not, the Bible does tell us not to violate our conscience. Whatever doesn't proceed from faith is sin. Making other arguments based on what the Bible doesn't say is Congressman Ted Lieu, who tweeted, Pitcher Jason Adams should read the New Testament. This is what Jesus said about homosexuality. 
Jesus is about love, not about hating people who are different from you. He should read the New Testament. Okay, well, here's the New Testament. Romans chapter 1, verse 27. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine. Jude, verse 7. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Maybe you should read the New Testament. Of course, he abandons the New Testament in the very next sentence, suggesting that only the explicit words of Jesus matter. If Jesus didn't explicitly speak against it, we can be certain he's cool with it. Let's try that out. Here's what Jesus said about pedophilia. Here's what Jesus said about necrophilia. Here's what Jesus said about sex trafficking. Here's what Jesus said about King Ted Lou's car. So Jesus affirms all those things, or arguments from silence are stupid. But Jesus is about love, not about hating people who are different from you. Again, what was the horrendous action here? What was the vile, contemptible, reprehensible action here? The organization said, we're going to do a pride night, we're going to put patches on the uniforms, but it's not required. And five people said, no thank you. And that's hatred for people who are different? If that's hatred, then what is hell? I know how much you love Jesus' words. You might be interested to know then that Jesus spoke more about hell than anyone else in the Bible, and it's not even close. It's perhaps possible that your understanding of love and hate and Jesus are way off the mark. Anyway, if you love what we're doing here, like, subscribe, rate, and review, drop me a comment, follow me on the major socials, join my author's Facebook page, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. Mm -hmm.